Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. Today we take a look at the highest power rated corded impact wrench on the market, as well as corded impacts in general, going all the way back to models 30 years old, which we'll also test today, to see with live power curves how their torque output compares to air and cordless models of today. Then we'll use a 50 foot extension cord like you would probably need to at home to see how that affects the power of a corded impact wrench like this. We picked up this Bauer 8.5 amp model 64120 from Harbor Freight for a steal of a price quite a long time ago at this point. Once we got it to the shop, we quickly realized we would not be able to test it without an, an extension cord, which, since we're all about testing versus the numbers on the box, seemed unfair. Fast forward a few months, we had this power outlet installed in the shop close to the dyno just for this experiment, which also allows us to test with and without an extension cord for more real-world comparison. Speaking of the numbers on the box, since this is a Harbor Freight we're talking about, torque numbers from that store are rarely shy on this channel, and this corded 8.5 amp power is no different. 1,050 foot-pounds bolt breakaway. Compare that to the Air Earthquake at 1190 and 20-volt cordless at 1200, and it's right in the mix, but I guess today we'll find out on the dyno. Those sky-high numbers, though, while we're basically numb to them today on air and cordless high torques, that's basically and maybe solely unique to the Harbor Freight as far as we can tell. Most corded impacts, even from top brands, advertise 300, 345, 450 foot-pounds, and that's around the same price, or higher in this case, on corded impacts. And that's usually 7 to 7.5 amps in most cases. For some extra context in this corded impact space, and to perhaps see how far we've come in the modern era with them, today we'll also be testing an Ingersoll Rand 8049 Model B, made in Japan around the early 90s, thanks to viewer Galusha Mike on Instagram who gave us his own and even shipped it himself. This model, which could have been featured in a commercial with Vanilla Ice at the time, is rated at only 5 amps, but still 290 foot-pounds, which compares to a Milwaukee corded of today. We're very curious, and essentially the reason we originally made this channel was about how old school power ratings compare on our dyno versus the modern rating system used by power tool brands. And if the rating on the Bauer matches up with the other similarly rated impacts from that same Harbor Freight. In our experience, none of these really make the 1000 they claim or whatever, even on max torque. But are all these three at least equally optimistic? We'll see. Torque isn't the only specs that top the charts on these corded impacts though. Just look at the sheer size of this thing. We're used to seeing seven to seven and a half inch air tools and eight and a half to nine inch cordless in this category. This thing is 11.55 inches long, longer than your average $5 foot long. But at 7.4 pounds, even with the cord, she's lighter than the also brushed motor 20 volt earthquake behemoth from the same store, which we measured at eight and a half pounds loaded. That kink size length of the Bauer is likely thanks to the power inverter box that this tool needs to convert the wall's AC power to usable brushed motor pixie power. We, like many of you who have requested testing on these tools in the comments, have often wondered though, if an 18 volt Milwaukee can make the power it does, surely a 110, 120 volt from the wall should make for an exponentially more powerful tool, right? Luckily for us, since none of us are electrical engineers, we don't have to answer that question with using our brains though, so let's just throw these on the dyno and find out. Up first is the 30 year old Ingersoll Rand rated at 290 foot pounds, shown on the power curve with our air and cordless battery friends from Harbor Freight, just for some visual gap to show. This is our five second forward working torque test. So 260 ain't bad in a five second test. Heck, even still working after 30 years of use for an electric IR is not bad. But here's the main attraction, the Bauer 1050 foot-pound rated corded monster. These corded ones really like to keep spinning after you let off the trigger. That's 418 foot-pounds, pretty good. And so far in order of their advertised specs from the store. The air gets out an early lead, but the cordless earthquake reels them in. Our next test is called Max Torque. This is 10 seconds in reverse. Here's how the old school IR stacks up. 
to change to reverse on this tool, the whole back housing sort of clocks into a different position. It took us a minute to figure that out. Yeah, so the IR does not like reverse. It made less in this 10 second test than it did in the five second forward test. Let's see if the Bauer has the same sort of hang up. And this one really likes to free spin. Once it gets momentum, it's really not wanting to slow down. You could definitely accidentally snap some smaller bolts with this tool if you're not letting off early. So this time it edges out the air earthquake, making 533 foot-pounds compared to 528, and 8% off that 20 volt cordless brush model. It's interesting how the air tool is able to come out the gates quicker than both electric tools, but in this case, both eventually reeling it back in for the win. On this channel, early gains are signs that the tool's dynamic force per blow is high, which is good for rusted and seized bolts and nuts, breaking that bond free, sort of. So we'd be interested in our viewers' experiences with these three tools and how that stacks up on rusted stuff. Our last test is called best case scenario, 15 seconds. And for electric tools, that's in either forward or reverse, whichever performs best. And for this early 90s IR, that's definitely forward. So let's see what she can do. Wow, 394 foot-pounds, still well out from the modern options here, but remember this tool is rated for 290. When's the last time we had a tool on this channel exceed their torque claims? And a 30-year-old one that's used at that. With the performance of the Bauer in its max torque test, let's see how it does in this BCS. It made its best run in reverse, so here's that. Basically matching the power of the air earthquake here, 610 versus 611, and realistically the 20 volt cordless as well. Honestly, none of the Harbor Freight impacts really shine in this BCS test when they're afforded the whole 15 seconds. They do all their work in 10, then sort of call it a day and flatline on the power curve from there, while many other tools don't. Does that mean you'd need 15 seconds for other tools to see an advantage over these ones? No, remember we're starting from zero foot-pounds. These graphs represent how the tools perform at various torque levels. If they stop at 600, then they make 600, and if another tool makes 700, it will loosen tighter stuff. But if they get to that 600 in a hurry, that's always better than the alternative because that means their dynamic torque is higher than otherwise, which is really good on rusted stuff, as we say. For our last test today, we want to show the difference between using a 50-foot extension cord and using the power cord that was on the Bauer to begin with. It's the reason we delayed this video, as we theorized using an extension cord might be like using a 75 foot air hose versus our normal 25 foot one on air tools, and not a fair demonstration. But it is more realistic than using the eight foot power cord on this model, as that would keep you rather tethered and a bit tight in your garage if you're trying to extend it to your wheels and such. Let's take a look. Wow, those fireworks inside this Bauer made us regret not shooting all of its power runs at a lower angle like this. We didn't even notice this until editing, as we're usually focused on the timer and the power figures during a run. That brush motor's definitely put in some overtime in, so that's 568 foot-pounds down from 610, or about a 7% loss. Not a huge difference, we might have assumed when using this cheap 50-foot extension. If you run one, though, you're not really taking a lot off the table, we think. But the real takeaway we had today was actually how impressive a corded impact, or at least this 8.5 amp Bauer one, can be 
from a brand that wants to try to reach for the sky in those torque numbers. It comes at a pretty huge penalty in sheer size, however. At a foot long, you're basically going to be doing only lug nuts or perhaps some chassis bolts on suspension if you're using a lift. But those 1,050 foot-pounds numbers, it seems to be in line or even better in the Air Tools case with the rest of the Impax Harbor Freight cells using that bolt breakaway figure, which is kind of their flavor of nut busting, which is impressive in itself, but maybe that's just saying that they're all equally optimistic from Harbor Freight. Of course, we're tightening here, even with our reverse runs, so we don't consider this hard proof. We're not really pointing any fingers. Either way, what about the performance of that old school IR corded impact? It advertised 290 and made 394, a whole lot more than it claimed, and it's not exactly new and out of the box. This reinforces our experience that brands used to, back in the day, play a pretty straight game with these numbers, but over the decades with no real universally adopted standard or body to enforce them, they've grown increasingly removed from reality, which is not unique to Harbor Freight as we've seen 35 episodes deep into our series now. We'll continue to test suggestions from our viewers in the comments section and come along with us as we move deeper into the cordless high torque category in the coming weeks. Subscribe if that sounds like your cup of tea, click like, to please the YouTube algorithm and thank you for watching.